Okay, everyone, welcome back to our ever so continued uh, lessons on C. I am still your host, Damien, and hopefully, I'll be able to teach you something in what I believe is now episode uh, 21 of our series. Um, I was just going back and reviewing the things that I've said I would teach you, and I realized that. I have missed out on a few things that I wanted to teach you. Um, a couple of them are going to be uh, very basic things, and a couple of them are just going to be semantics. So this is going to be an easy, easy, easy episode. Now, in most coding, you'll see this especially in Java. I don't think I've ever seen a Java program that hasn't been written like this. but um. I mentioned in, I believe it was video number two, uh, camelback notation, and that's where you have a variable and you declare it, um, and it's going to be multiple words. So we'll say something like telephone number. You notice how when I have a new, I, it always starts off with a lowercase letter, and then the second word is, you know, uh, capitalized where the word starts. Well, that's really, that's all camelback notation actually is. And, you know, it can be anything. It can be double, uh, I think that the example I used, or well, actually this would be an int. Uh, the example I used in that video was items on hand. And maybe we're going to have another one called um, items sold. And again, I just screwed that up because that's supposed to be lowercase. And, you know, you, you kind of get the idea. You can do this with any uh, variable name. You can have any mixture of uh, uppercase, lowercase letters, and underscores. Um, you can also have numbers in your uh, variable names. So maybe we'll say uh, double, let's say uh, money in, and then say money in two, and then... I don't know. Those are both valid things. We can use both of those just fine. Now, Hungarian notation, which you don't see too often. Um, you'll see it occasionally in, in more professional types of programming, is when you'll see things that are named plainly. Um, I think that in a, a couple of my videos, I kind of slipped in Hungarian notation and didn't really notice. Um, a good example is... Um, let's say that we take the, uh, just some type of uh, a number. Um, let's, what's, what's a good example of an int? I'm just not coming up with anything off the top of my head. Okay, let's just say we have, um, okay, the number of shopping carts owned by a store. We're just going to do I shopping Parts. And this is one of those things where the I, it's it's not a reference to Apple or anything. It's just um it just means that this value is an int. So let's assume that we go down, you know, uh, a couple of pages, and you know, up until then I didn't need to do anything. And I just see C out or no, let's let's just assume that I just see this. I see I shopping ooh, not shooping, shopping carts equals 100 and then let's say cash equal, or minus or cash minus equals 10,000 or something like that you know now I know that what this actually means maybe uh, if it was a name that I wasn't as familiar with the shopping carts or it wasn't as descriptive I wouldn't know what that really was but now that I see that it's of type int you know I can kind of uh I can kind of just look at it and know, well, clearly it's an int and it's being set to 100. So that's kind of why people use Hungarian notation. Um, you'll notice that I still use camelback notation here, just for increased readability. Um, that's what those two things are. Now, there's another kind of uh, concept that I haven't really shown you guys yet. and it's about variable declaration and this might come in handy to you guys sometimes um, 
when you declare a variable, it can be declared in a certain way. Uh, here's an example. Let's say I have int uh, x, and we'll just set that equal to 10, right? We can then take int y, and I know that I'm doing these on different lines. Um, you can usually comma separate these. I'm just doing it to show you. And we can do x plus 10, or something along those lines. And that's totally fine. When we see out for y, um, that should be 20. And, you know, you can... We're going to get more complex with, than that in future videos, but I wanted to start you guys off really easily with it. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you guys was... Um, I've used total as a variable a lot, and typically I don't like to do that. Um, if I'm using total, it's because I'm teaching somebody else something. Um, here's an example. Let's say that I have a for loop, and it's int i equals... Um, this isn't going to be a good... That would be a good example for using total. Okay, here's a, here's a good example for me not using total. int y equals, we'll say, x plus 10, right? Now, I can say total equals x plus y, and, you know, that's, that's fine, or maybe even x multiplied by y, and that's assuming I have int total declared. That would be kind of uh, good. But, you know, something like that, x times y or x plus y, or, you know, it's going to be something like that. But instead, what you can do is, in your C out, you can actually say x plus y. And in this case, that's just going to print out 30. So instead of using another variable for that, you can really use your, your C out to declare things. Um, if, you're, if you ever think that it's too many things being used at once and you just want to output one variable, that's fine too. You can just put it in parentheses. And then everything in the parentheses gets worked out before it tries to C out anything. Um, and any type of, of thing can be used here. Um, you can use x times y. Um, if you remember, we've kind of fiddled around with cmath a bit. And again, the, the cmath can actually be used here. We just do pow, um, and we have to use double x, uh, and then comma y. And so then that's going to do 10 raised to the 20th power, which is apparently that um, scientific notation for the win. And uh, we don't need to use total. Um, there will be times when we'll want to use it because we're going to reuse it a few times, but in general, when you're writing a C++ program, you want to have as, l as few variables floating around as possible. Um, just for the sake of manageability. Um, again, as we progress further, I'm going to be using less things like x and y. I just use those basically because they're simple math terms that everyone's kind of familiar with. Uh, just simple one-letter variables. Um, I think that there was something else I wanted to touch on. How am I doing for time? Yeah, under 10 minutes. Okay, um... The only other thing that I kind of wanted to touch on is that uh, it's it's a note about style. Now, you've seen me do things like this where, say, I'll say, hello world, um, and then I'll maybe output a variable here. Um, I don't have anything to output because I just deleted everything, so we'll just type in a bunch of stuff. But you'll notice that when I get beyond a certain point on the screen, I'll always do, say, something like an end L, and then I'll just come back down to the next line and see out. Technically, you don't have to do that. Um, the reason why I do that is is for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm posting all this stuff on IDE1, which is a, uh, a website for you guys, and if I go beyond a certain point on one line, it's going to stretch things out, and you guys are going to have to scroll over to the right. That's not good. But even still, I mean, if I if I just do like this, sorry about my kind of face rolling here. Um, but you'll notice, I mean, if if I have a C out statement here, what happens if this big long line here ends up having a bug? 
I mean, that's not going to do anybody any good. It's, I mean, because then you're not going to, you're going to have to scroll to the right and back to the left. And there are limits on how much you can put in, in one see out section. But even still, I mean, there's, there's got to be a limit on, you know, what you want to do. Um, try to make it so your programs remain readable. I think that that's one of the biggest things I've, I've tried to teach so far is, you know, if your program's not readable, it's, it's going to hurt you and everyone else that's trying to read it. Um, and just one more thing going forward. From here on, um, you know the basics. With what I've taught you so far, you can technically, through painstaking effort, mind you, make pretty much any application there is. Now, again, that's with painstaking effort. Um, you would have to learn a lot about how C++ works and a lot about, you know, uh, how to deal with different libraries, but these, you know, uh, basic structures, your, your simple input-output, your sort of simple, uh, um, what, what am I thinking, your simple if-else structure and your simple for loops, are going to be able to create basically any project. Now, how much ease you're going to have without using custom containers and things of that nature? Probably not much, but in truth, I think that what we're going to be getting into now is going to help you guys realize the true power of C++. And I'm hoping that over the course of about the next 20 to 25 videos, that you guys really become a lot more comfortable with C++ and programming in general. Um, one other little caveat before I wrap this up, um, I don't want to get to 760 seconds, so I'm going to give myself these last few seconds to sum up. Um, pretty much everything you've learned so far to this point transfers extremely well in the Java. You're going to have to learn new names for things like uh, C out turns into system dot out dot print or dot println and things of that nature. C in turns into kind of a mess. But overall, all this stuff translates very well into Java. Um, there is a intro to Java course running. I haven't taken it uh, on University of Reddit. But if it's good, then you should be able to take this and probably learn the two simultaneously. Um, Java does have some upsides, especially with this compiler. Okay, and with all that being said, I'm going to leave it off here. Sorry I ran a little over what I predicted I would. Um, have a good night, and check out my next video.